I've had a lot of different lenses now and still this lens for less than a hundred pounds is one of my favorites ever and today we're going to talk about why. Let's go. What's up guys, welcome to another video. So yeah, today we are talking about why I think the Canon 50mm STM f1.8 is the most underrated lens you can buy. Not only is it underrated and you can buy it, you can buy it for a really good price. This is less than 100 pounds. I don't know exactly what it's selling for right now, but I'll link it right here on the screen. Um, and it will be linked in the description as well if you want to go check out yourselves on Amazon. So you'll be able to have a look at the lens that I am talking about yourself. So, why do I think this is the most underrated lens ever? We're going to get into that right now. I'm going to go through it point by point and share with you my thoughts. I should start by saying this does not mean it is the best lens ever. I appreciate that some of the Canon L glass and stuff like that out there, of course, is amazing. Uh, but pound for pound, those lenses cost more than a thousand pounds, right? You can get this for less than 100 pounds. So in terms of the weight of its worth, I believe this is the one that is the most underrated. So this lens is pretty well known, right? You may have heard the term Nifty 50. You've certainly heard it on this channel. This is the Nifty 50, the Canon 50mm f1.8. Now, today we're talking about the Canon version, but other companies do similar, right? I know that Nikon, uh, Nikon, however you guys want to say it, uh, does a 50mm 1.8 lens as well. Um, I believe it's reasonably priced too. I'll be honest, I don't know enough about the other companies out there, so I won't touch on them. Uh, I know um, uh, Yongnyo, however you say it, they do like a copy version of this. I've heard that's supposed to be pretty bad. And bearing in mind the price point of this is good, I wouldn't risk going for that one. This is the one to get, especially if you are a Canon shooter. The Nifty 50. It's certainly been nifty for me through the course of the last few years. I love it. Absolutely. So the first thing about this is the price, right? We just talked about the price. Now, so many of the Canon lenses are so, so expensive. Now, look, they're some of the best lenses on the market, right? So, of course, they're going to be expensive. But when you're sat there having to pay, you know, one and a half thousand pounds for a lens, it's tough to take regardless of how good it is. There are very few lenses. And in fact, I'd have to do a bit of research, but I would imagine there aren't any other lenses for less than £100 where you could get f1.8, which you can with this. We're going to touch on the benefits of that just shortly, but the price for this is massive. It's worth getting. If you're somebody, right, I get so many people contact me. If you're out there, you've got your new DSLR, you've got the kit lens that comes with it. In a lot of cases, that's going to be something like the 1855mm, um, the something like that. Which lens should you get next? That's what everyone says to me. Which lens should you get next? If you're learning photography and you want to practice and you want to do something new, this is the lens. Several reasons. First of all, it gives you a chance to experiment with f1.8 aperture. Secondly, it's a prime lens. It gives you a chance to play around with the prime lens and the shallow depth of field. Loads and loads of advantages. So if you've got your kit lens, your new DSLR, which lens should you buy next? 100% this is the one that I would recommend. Okay, so rolling on from there, no hanging around. What is the next best point? That is the aperture. This is f1.8. Now, what, what that basically means, a really low number aperture means the opening inside this lens is really, really big. So it's letting in loads and loads of light. That has several advantages. It enables you to get more light into the lens without having your shutter speed too low. I've done other videos where I've talked about that with shutter speed, a faster shutter speed is really quick, so there's less chance for light to get into that lens, whereas a slower shutter speed has much more chance for light to get in. What you can do with an f1.8 lens, because that aperture is, is so big, small in terms of the number, but so big, it lets in loads of light into the lens, which means you can get away with having a much faster shutter speed. What does that enable you to do? It enables you to do things like photograph sports indoors, where you need a much faster shutter speed, but you don't have the capability with the low light. If you're there in an environment where you've got an f4 lens and you're trying to photograph some sports indoors, chances are to get your image exposed enough, you're going to be having to drop that shutter speed down to like 1 500th and then you're getting motion blur in your images. 
That is a massive advantage of the f1.8 aperture. Another advantage of that f1.8 aperture is you can take some images where you play around with that really shallow depth of field. You know when you see those like beautiful looking images where the front of the image is in focus and sharp and then the background kind of drifts off into that creamy blurry goodness well that that's how that's created it's by using a shallow depth of field which you can get with a lens that has a 1.8 aperture which this lens does especially as i said before if you're used to those kit lenses where you're playing around with apertures of like f4 or f5.6 you're going to get some nice images but just by taking that exact same image with the background blurry and out of focus it's going to look so much better and it's taking that step towards the difference between like a regular photo and a more professional looking image just because of that 1.8 aperture. The third thing for me, now we kind of already linked on a couple of these bits, but that is how good it is in low light. Forget the shutter speeds and your sports stuff for a second. What are so many people out there wanting to take photos of if they've got a new camera? It tends to be their friends, families, you're in your house, you're in a restaurant, when we're allowed to go to restaurants again. You're in places where the light is down low. People like event photographers, wedding photographers, they suffer so much with the dark light in churches and stuff like that. This type of lens helps you counteract that because if you can shoot at such a low aperture, it's letting more light into that lens without having to increase your ISO level. If you guys are using your kit lenses right now and you're taking photos with any kind of auto settings on, you're gonna notice that some of those images are really grainy. That's because to compensate for the fact that the aperture is only f4, it's having to increase the ISO level, which makes your image grainy. If you've got this and the aperture's f1.8, that ISO level is going to be so much lower and therefore you're going to get such cleaner, more beautiful looking images in low light situations. And last but certainly not least, is that this is just such a neat like little lens. It's built like a tank, right? I've dropped this thing a fair few times. Uh, I don't want to try and drop it now, so I'm not going to throw it around <laughs> too much. But it's solid. It used to actually um, have a plastic back, so the, the fitting and everything on the back used to be plastic. This is the slightly newer version. You guys might have heard the term plastic fantastic. That's what people used to call that old lens. Uh, this is the, the metal back. A newer version, the STM lens, is really, really solid. Like I said, I have unfortunately dropped it a few times. I don't think it's even got any, no, not even a scratch on it. Really solid, really good piece of glass. Works really well. I've had it for, uh, well, since this lens came out, this newer one, so probably about three years. Some of my earliest portfolio images were taken on this lens and those of you guys who've watched my channel for a while will know that I use this lens fairly extensively up until quite recently um, and I still use it for some stuff now absolutely I do and that pretty much rounds us off that is why I think this lens is the most underrated lens you can buy if you're new to photography and you're thinking what lens should I get next hundred percent I would stand behind this one and I would back it if you wanted to get it used, you could probably even get this for less than 50 quid if you search around eBay, something like that. Even if you've got loads of other fancy glass, you've got your 2470, you've got your 70 to 200, there is still room for this in your bag. I'm telling you right now, I always carry this with me, and I find myself sometimes on there, I've got my 1DX, I've got my 2470, I've got my 70 to 200, but what's the problem with those? They're both f2.8, and every now and again, I'm in a situation where I think, you know what? The f1.8 would really help me here. The 50mm prime is perfect, and I still pull this one out. I've had this on my 1DX and used it within the last, well, not the last two weeks, because we've been in lockdown, but within the last couple of months, um, I have used this in a professional setting. So even if you're a seasoned pro, I still think there is a place to potentially use this lens in your bag. Guys, I hope you found this useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do take a second to hit that like button for me. It helps me out loads on my channel if you do, and it helps my video to be more successful. That's why I ask you to do it every time, and that's why I am sincerely grateful for everybody who does. Please think about subscribing. Loads more videos to come on my channel. We're knocking out two or three a week right now. We're going to keep that rolling for as long as we possibly can. Guys, thank you very much, and I will see you. I will see you on the next video.